Hi, I'm Roger Lynn here in my home office. And in this video, I'm going to talk about this product here, which is the Akai MPC uh, Live 2, uh, which is their, their current, one of their current models of the MPC series. A little background first. Years ago, I designed the MPC drum machines for the Japanese Akai company. First, the MPC 60 in 1988, and then the, 19, the MPC 62. Uh, Model 2 in 1991, and then the MPC 3000 in 1994. Uh, then, unfortunately, I had a falling out with the original Akai company and moved on, focusing on new ideas that I was working on, uh, like my adrenaline rhythmic guitar pedals, uh, the Tempest uh, drum machine with Dave Smith, and now my instrument expressive keyboard. Uh, this is one of the models right here. So to be honest, I haven't used or even really thought about the MPC products or Akai since then. But occasional, occasionally people will ask my opinion about the current MPC products, and I've had to say that I don't know. Uh, so I was curious about how good they are. Uh, by coincidence, recently I've been in touch with the current American Akai company, and they kindly offered to send me one of their MPC models, the MPC Live 2. So I thought I'd give it a, a go and let people know what I think, which is what I'm doing in this video. The short answer is, I didn't expect it to be as good as it is, but I must say I'm impressed with it. They, they really did a very good job. Uh, first, I was pleased to see that they've honored my original design by keep, keeping most of the original panel controls, uh, like the record and overdub buttons and the play and play start buttons, uh, the note repeat feature, the full level button, the uh, timing correction, um, and, and so you have access, fast access to those functions. And uh, that was important to me in the original design because I really wanted to focus on uh, what the musician wants to do to play music and not read manuals and, and, um, uh, and have to adjust a bunch of settings to, to make the machine do what, you were, what most people wanted to do anyway. Uh, and so also they, they did in fact maintain the fast, this fast and efficient workflow, uh, the same as in the original MPCs. Uh, for example, you can record beats and pitch parts in a loop with real-time quantization or, or timing correction, I call it, and they still call it, and swing. Uh, and there are plenty of little details I can tell you as the software developer as well for the original MPCs that are required to get right to make the loop recording with timing correct and swing work correctly, and which they did. It really does feel right. Uh, for example, there's no perceivable delay at the loop back point uh, in the, when you're loop recording and when uh, transitioning between sequences. And there's a lot of stuff that has to be done at those transition points. So they, they're doing it by prefetching or something, but it really is, is done well. Uh, and the feel of the timing correct and the swing are absolutely correct. Uh, very impressive. So the software is very tight and well written, uh, and I have to uh, compliment the, the software writers at Kai for this. Uh, but more importantly, the Kai has brought the MPC into the present by adding uh, mod modern features while retaining the original workflow. Uh, first, in addition to drum tracks and pitch tracks, it records audio tracks and with very good sound quality. So the audio circuitry is also very well designed. And while the old MPCs uh, could tune simple samples for pitched, uh, simple pitched parts, uh, the new ones have uh, a surprisingly good library of multi-sampled multi tuned instruments. And another big improvement is this um, seven inch touchscreen. That's a big touchscreen, and it really adds a lot of um, functionality in an intuitive way. Uh, and, and it has actually much functionality of a computer with Wi-Fi for directly downloading sounds, sequences, and software updates without connection to a computer. Now, I like this independence from the computer uh, because often people use a computer all day at work, and when they come home and want to relax by playing some music in their music room, uh, they don't want to deal with problems like pushed updates that break plugins or something like that or connection problems between the computer and control surfaces or interface. They just want to make music. And so it's nice to have everything in one box. And one box that doesn't have a typewriter keyboard but has buttons and controls and screens that are really optimized for making music and not writing emails and things like that. Now that said, the MPC uh, does come with its own 
uh, computer DAW for Mac and Windows, allowing you the option to have the same operation on a computer if you prefer, which in that case would be using the MPC just as a um, uh, control surface and audio MIDI interface. But the control, both of them are very tightly integrated into their uh, computer software. Another couple of uh, very nice uh, surprises are the built-in speakers and the battery. The speakers sound surprisingly good with two uh, fairly large forward-facing tweeters and up-facing tweeters and what appears to be a fairly large woofer inside that delivers strong bass at a pretty high volume. Um, I'm surprised how good it was. Um, it's so good that I, I, uh, I found myself preferring the convenience of the internal speakers uh, instead of my studio monitors, which are directly behind the, the uh, camera at this point. And the battery is a great bonus, uh, allowing me to disconnect power and take it to my backyard or anywhere else in the spur of the moment. They claim up to uh, five hours of battery life on the website, which is good enough to take you through a, a gig. Um, and you'll notice right now there's no power connected to this at all. So um, what I'm going to do is, is uh, just do a little demonstration of creating a, a simple groove for you. So I'll start with a beat, um, and I'll just do something simple. I'm uh, not as good a musician as you guys are, but I can do some simple things. Uh, and then a disclaimer number two is uh, everything I play sounds like it comes from the 70s and 80s, so uh, bear with me. <laughs> so anyway, I'll create a, a simple groove to start with, a little um, two-bar groove. And by the way, you're hearing the actual internal, internal speakers. Uh, I, I didn't want to, to record directly into the uh, computer for this because uh, I wanted you to hear the speakers. Now, of course, they're not going to sound as good as uh, it would be if you were actually standing here, but it, I can tell you that it does sound very good. And now I'm going to add a, a repeated chord part. And to do this, I've connected up my instrument keyboard, uh, and it works flawlessly with it. Uh, and provides power for it, which is very nice. And of course, you can use any MIDI keyboard you want. And um, that same feature, the note repeat feature, uh, that allow you to repeat the hi-hat, me to repeat the hi-hat on the previous part, works with this keyboard too. <laughs> And now I'm going to add a third part. Uh, in this case, it's an uh, ensemble cello part, which is part of the internal library, uh, ensemble strings. And um, to do that, I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the previous track. I'm going to use my instrument keyboard to put it in. But you can also use the 16 pads uh, to get 16 pitches, uh, which out, works out very, very well. It's If you're doing simple parts, but then you probably want to add a MIDI keyboard or something like an instrument to it. So I'm going to put this third part in now. So, uh, oh, I, I forgot to tell you that I uh, used one of the edit functions. I doubled that two-bar loop to a four-bar loop because the cello phrase is a four-bar uh, phrase. Okay, now I'm going to add a, a very simple bass part as the last part. Uh, and the first thing I've done is I um, uh, doubled the, the loops out to eight bars. Um, and so I also took the cello's part and I copied it two other tracks and then increased it by one octave and on the second track by two octaves. So I had uh, a full string section with um, uh, th three octaves of, of that string part. And what I'm going to do is just add this bass part using a, a Moog bass sound that's, um, uh, that was, is one of the, the stock sounds inside the unit. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward sound. You'll get the idea.
and that's the MPC Live 2. And the same workflow, by the way, exists on all of their MPC models, each having a different uh, size and, and number of knobs and buttons. You know, some of them are small, backpackable, some of them are large, more of a desktop unit. You know, and, and again, the sound you're hearing is only the unit's built-in speakers, recorded only through my little lav mic. There you have it. If you're wondering what I think of the current NPCs, I like them, and I think the current Akai company has done a very good job of, of not only honoring the workflow of my original design, uh, but while also bringing it into the present with modern features. And in the process, giving computers and DAWs a run for their money. In fact, I like this thing so much that I'm not giving it back. Thanks for watching.